SWAT, Police Tactical Unit. Within the world of special forces, a unique place is held by police tactical units. A specialized unit within a police force, they more often resemble tactically equipped soldiers rather than a normal street police officer. These units are trained to handle situations beyond the capabilities of standard police departments. Using military-grade weaponry and equipment, these tactical units are able to tackle counter-terrorism operations, hostage situations, search and arrest warrants, and other dangerous situations that are threatening public order. Over the past few decades, many of these distinctive units have become world-renowned fighting forces. These include the French GIGN, the German GSG-9, Israeli Yamam, the Russian Spetsnaz, the Brazilian Bope, and the Mexican Gopes. However, the very first of these tactical units was founded in the United States in the 1960s. Named SWAT, it's now synonymous across the globe, so much so that it's often used as a universal term for these specialized police units. In the aftermath of World War II, life in the United States began to change. The streets of America's cities saw some of the most prominent changes, most notably a dramatic increase in violence as well as crimes carried out by organized criminal gangs. The decades of the 1960s was marked by antisocial behavior, criminal activity, frequent riots, and even mass shootings. These new threats were beyond the ability of most American police officers who were armed and trained to maintain order in relatively peaceful communities. It was quickly realized that police units that were specially trained to handle these dangerous and volatile situations were desperately needed after events such as the 1966 shooting in Austin, Texas by Charles Whitman, an ex-Marine who fired down on the general public from an observation platform on top of the University of Texas's main tower killing and wounding many people before being shot dead by police himself. There were also the mass riots in California to contend with. Attention cadets, stay tuned for this lesson from our sponsor, NordVPN. We're here today to teach you all about the threats you face every time you go online. Take Cadet Jones here. He doesn't know it yet, but he's already under attack by Cadet Smith sitting next to him. Wait, what? Any moment now, he's going to realize that the very safe Wi-Fi he just connected to is in fact Cadet Smith's own personal <laughs> network. He's already got his spies crawling in to attack. You tricked me. You've been subject to a man in the middle attack. Cadet Smith can now create your network on his PC. And next time you type in any personal information, like your password or banking details, it will go through his network first. He can even see what you've been doing instead of watching simple history videos. Next time you go online, use NordVPN. That way you don't have to rely on being smarter than Cadet Jones here. Hey! NordVPN will do the job for you, protecting you from Cadet Smith. Their threat protection provides a completely secure online experience with 100% data anonymity. By supporting NordVPN, you're also supporting these cadets as they carry on making content for you. Well, except for Cadet Jones, he's not going to make it through basic training. Sign up right now using the link in the description below. You'll get an exclusive discount on NordVPN's two-year plan, access to free anti-malware, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't be like Cadet Jones. Get NordVPN today. John Nelson, an officer of the Los Angeles Police Department, was the first to think of such an idea. He initially proposed the formation of a special police unit to a senior police inspector, Darrell Gates, in 1964. The concept was soon authorized and put into action with the introduction of a special police unit of 15 four-man teams. Officers were armed with military weapons that were not typically issued to police officers. The rationale behind this was based on the proposed scenario of officers confronting heavily armed criminals who would otherwise have far superior firepower. The unit was named SWAT, an acronym for Special Weapons Assault Team. On the recommendation of his superior, Deputy Police Chief Ed Davis, Inspector Gates changed the official designation to Special Weapons and Tactics. Officers from all over the LAPD volunteered for the service. Inspector Gates chose applicants with prior military service and specialized experience with weaponry and tactics. The role was regarded as having a special status and came with numerous additional benefits. SWAT officers, however, were required to attend intensive monthly training to maintain a quality of service. Their first significant engagement came in 1969 with a major confrontation with members of the Black Panther Party. 
In a densely populated area of Los Angeles, 40 SWAT officers stormed the party's headquarters. The Panthers barricaded themselves inside and responded with gunfire, which led to a shootout that lasted for over four hours. The SWAT officers were armed with semi-automatic rifles and even requested permission to use a grenade launcher. When the shootout was over and the Panthers had surrendered, four Panthers and four officers had been injured. LAPD officials realized that the job would never have been accomplished without the SWAT officers. In 1971, teams were assigned full-time to the Los Angeles Police Department's Metropolitan Division, an elite unit within the LAPD. The Special Weapons and Tactics Unit was also given the new designation of D-Platoon. Five years after the Black Panther shootout, LAPD SWAT were involved in another similar incident which involved a group of radical left-wing militants who called themselves the Symbionese Liberation Army. A small number of these militants had fortified a house in the Compton area of Los Angeles, and a standoff between them and several SWAT units commenced. The assault on the house killed six of the militants, and eventually the house itself caught fire, killing the remaining fighters left inside. There were no SWAT injuries or fatalities throughout the incident, once again proving the effectiveness of the elite unit. The shootout also led to the subsequent decision to arm SWAT units with fully automatic weapons to enable them to return heavy fire. The Symbionese Liberation Army shootout brought even further reformations to the unit, with the presentation of official rules of engagement for SWAT in the incidents report. It was decided that the units were to concentrate on four main threats – riots, sniper attacks, political assassination attempts, and urban guerrilla warfare. As cited in the report, quote, The purpose of SWAT is to provide protection, support, security, firepower, and rescue to police operations in high personal risk situations where specialized tactics are necessary to minimize casualties, end quote. In the decades following the formation of SWAT, the organization, tactics, and mission have consistently evolved. For example, the war on drugs was the primary focus of SWAT operations in the 1980s and 1990s, and continues right up to the present day. During the years following the 9-11 attacks, SWAT teams have also become involved in counter-terrorism. The success of the LAPD's SWAT units was a clear demonstration of its importance in modern policing. From the 1970s onwards, many other police departments across the country adopted their own special operation units. This also included the FBI and military police. Uniforms The original SWAT uniforms were typically a distinctive black or blue color with inscriptions of SWAT or police or sheriff on the back and front. The headgear consisted of either surplus World War II-era steel helmets or fiberglass motorcycle helmets that provided very limited protection. As time passed, Kevlar-based PASGT ballistic helmets were introduced, which offered far more protection, as well as being lighter and more compact. More recently, most SWAT units have abandoned the traditional black or blue police uniform colors and switched to standard battle dress uniforms with camouflage patterns, more akin to military fatigues. For the purpose of police tactical operations, some military uniforms are modified by removing cargo pockets on the trousers and upper and lower blouse pockets and adding them on the sleeves. On top of the uniform, SWAT officers also wear ballistic tactical vests. While fairly bulky, they offer all the protection required for missions in hostile environments. Weapons the first SWAT teams generally used M1 carbines, mass-produced in World War II and therefore readily available. A landmark weapon of the units, however, was the Heckler & Koch MP5 submachine gun. This delayed blowback roller-locked system weapon was extremely reliable and suitable for clearing of cramped interiors. Even so, the weapon had one major flaw. It had a considerably low stopping power, only firing 9mm rounds. Thus, it began to fall out of favor and was instead replaced with the 5.56mm round carbines, namely the Colt CAR-15 and the M4. Shotguns have also been a stable weapon of the U.S. police forces since the very earliest days of law enforcement. SWAT teams have made equal frequent use of them for their heavyweight firepower. Many units carried Remington 870 shotguns. However, from the late 1980s, these were largely replaced with the more modern Italian-made semi-automatic Benelli M1 shotguns. These weapons were almost always used in tandem with assault rifles due to the limited range of the shotgun. 
SWAT sniper teams usually use the American-made Remington 700P, the police version of the bolt-action center-fire rifle. Each SWAT team member also has a pistol holstered to their side. These are usually semi-automatic pistols, for example the Colt M1911 pistol series, Beretta 92 pistols, Sig Sauer P226 and P229, and the FN57. Due to the special conditions of the mission, SWAT teams also make frequent use of non-lethal weapons. Depending on the scenario, they have access to tasers, tear gas, pepper spray canisters, pepper ball guns, shotguns loaded with beanbag rounds, stinger grenades, and flashbang stun grenades. Formation The size and formation of a SWAT team often varies depending on the police department. However, there are typically two distinct elements, a sniper and observation team providing overwatch, along with an entry team for entering and clearing hostile areas. The number of men in each SWAT team is also generally divided into three types, four-man, six-man, and eight-man. In reality, these numbers are not static and often adapt to the differing factors of a mission. The basic structure of a SWAT four-man team consists of the team leader, who coordinates the movement of the team, a scout, who leads the team from the point and provides cover at the forward position, a cover man who provides covering fire for an assigned teammate, covers danger areas as they appear, and can act as an assaulter and perform other duties as directed by the team leader. Rear security, an alternate scout responsible for providing security and protection to the rear of the formation. An eight-man team differs from a four-man team by having an assistant leader and four cover men. The sniper team usually has two members who focus on overwatch, providing observation, intelligence, and fire support, quite often situated on rooftop positions. Recruitment and Training While the recruitment procedure varies slightly from one police department to another, the unit is based on serving officers volunteering to join, as long as they meet the rigorous requirements. Maintaining a perfect level of physical fitness is a standard requirement for all SWAT officers, so physical training is essential. Various exercises, including long-distance runs and full tactical gear, as well as obstacle courses, are always on the agenda. Marksmanship is naturally an equally important skill. All SWAT officers are required to be able to handle all weapons in the arsenal, regardless of their specialty. In addition, they're required to be a master marksman. To achieve this, the officers regularly spend many hours practicing firing in realistic scenarios, identifying hostile and non-hostile targets, and firing into barricaded rooms. Individual training, team exercises, or simulations of combat situations are also given great attention. Further specialized training includes sniper courses, explosives handling, surveillance techniques, and hostage negotiation methods. Officers are expected to become trained negotiators. Weaponry and equipment play a vital role in the effectiveness of these SWAT units. However, it's often stressed that a well-functioning unit only comes together when strong team unity is established. As the saying goes, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. 